Welcome to The Jenna Bank Show. I am Jenna, your host, and I am all about helping you live life to your fullest potential. My guest today, you're going to absolutely love her, especially if you're anyone like me who has lots of dreams and goals that you'd like to achieve. Her story is so inspirational, but not only that, it's just amazing to me to think about where she came from and where she got to in her career. And she's almost had like multiple careers that seem totally disconnected, but they made perfect sense for her. And that goes to show you the power of our mindset. So I really want you to give this a listen today because you might just learn something that will help give you inspiration to reach your goals and dreams. My guest today is none other than Liz Bruner. Liz is the CEO and founder of Bruner Communications, and she's the best-selling author of her new book, Dare to Own You, Taking Your Authenticity and Dreams into Your Next Chapter, which is also recommended on Forbes. She's an Emmy award-winning journalist, y'all. Her television career spanned 28 years and featured many memorable highlights. Along with co-anchoring the number one rated 6 p.m. newscast at ABC TV, WCVB New Center at 5 in Boston, so maybe you saw her if you lived in the Boston area during that time. During that time, though, she conducted exclusive one-on-one -on -one interviews with prominent figures ranging from professional athletes to global political leaders such as Barack Obama, and also some cultural icons that, of course, we all know and love, like Oprah Winfrey, the queen herself. Liz launched BrunerAcademy.com in 2020, which is an online learning platform. She's also a, an expert communications coach, a motivational speaker, and she's also the host of Live Your Best Life with Liz Bruner podcast. <music> Liz, welcome to the show. I'm really excited to have this conversation with you today. As am I. It's great to be with you, Jenna. Thanks so much for having me today. Oh, it's my pleasure. You look beautiful. I love As the red. Do you. <laughs> Thank you. I was just in Portugal and um, decided to try the headband thing. I saw it at this, uh, they have this famous flea market. I forgot what it's called, but they have all this fun little stuff that you could buy. And I was like, oh, I haven't rocked a headband. I don't think in ever. So it's so easy. I know I use one, for example, when I'm in the gym or working out or something like that, I just want to get everything off my face. It's up yeah. in a ponytail, whatever. So it looks great on you. Thank you. I'm not even, <laughs> as, it feels good to have all the hair out of the face. So I might get used to this. <laughs> so Liz, I have you on today because I really not only just wanted to introduce everyone to you, you have such an incredible background and your story is unbelievable as I've gotten to know through your book, as well as I was on your show and I've gotten to know you a little bit, but, um, your story, I'm just so like drawn to it, especially because of where you came from. You know, it sounds mm -hmm. like you and I both have a lot in common in, as in regards to, uh, the confidence getting us through some of these hurdles, especially when it comes to fear. And of course, uh, for everyone who uh, doesn't know, your new book is Dare to Own You, which just came out. Wait, I can't even get that on the camera right there. I we think go. you got it. There you got it. <laughs> Dare to Own You, which just came out November of last year, right? Yes. And um, what prompted you to put this book out into the world? You know, Jenna, I started it back in the summer of 2019. And I kind of felt like I was going off course. So I stopped writing. And the off course section actually became the template for my how to be a rock star public speaker mm. course on okay. my BrunerAcademy.com. So, you know, not wasted content. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then last year, 2021, my business coach, actually, it was in the fall of 2020. I have to backtrack here a little bit. Mm. My business coach, I had told her about the How to Be a Rockstar course. And I said, we've produced it. It's fantastic. And she said, oh, I, you know, maybe there's an ebook in this. And I said, really? And she said, yes. Why don't you log it all, transcribe it all, and send it to me? I said, Michelle, I wrote it. I can send you the scripts. And she said, you know, I co-own a publishing company. How? I did not know that, Jenna. After 
all this time of working with her, I had no clue. Hmm. So I sent it to her and she said, this is really, really good. But it reads like a course. I said, I wrote it like a course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of yeah. course. She said, it would take a lot to make it into a book. And I said, well, I have all this other content that I started before I got off course. I said, will you just take a look at it? It's not very much content. Just, just tell me, is it, is it worth anything? Is it good? Is it crap? I don't know. I don't hmm. know. I sent it to her and she said, this is really good. This is the makings of a book. And we have this program at Grace Point Publishing. We will provide you with a writing coach. We will help you with an editor. We will help you with the cover, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. I signed up on the spot that night. Mm. And so then just about a year ago, April of 2021, I got connected to Shauna, who is my writing coach. And I had sent her, you know, that limited amount of content. And she said, I want to know more about this. And I want to know more about that. I said, really? You do? I, I was sort of shocked at the story she wanted to know more about. And she said, just keep writing. Just keep writing. And I did. And Jenna, I don't know. You know, the universe just conspired at the right time. Yeah. And I started writing and I just kept writing. I was possessed. Mm -hmm. I was so compelled. And I just kept writing and writing and writing and writing. Before I knew it, by the end of July, I had written a book. And I, remember, I remember the day that I, it was a Sunday afternoon, about 530 in the afternoon. I'd been writing all day and I was finishing up on the last chapter and I got done and I said to myself, oh my God, I, I have written a book. <laughs> I've written a book. I was like, this is so exciting. <laughs> Meanwhile, heads down, you're writing, writing, writing like a madman, mad woman. Yes. And next thing you know, boom, you're at the end. You're like, wow, I did it. Yeah. You know that feeling. You've done it yourself. That's very cool. Yeah, I did it just a little before you did. Yeah, yeah I did it in 2020. But same thing, did it in about four months and then went through all the editing process and all that. So what is that? I mean, is that what compelled you? Is that conversation? Or was there something burning? I think there was something burning, but okay. it even goes further back than that. So many people have been telling me for years, Jenna, Liz, you should write a book. And this would come from people who were in my workshops, one-on-one yeah. -on -one clients. When I would give a keynote speech someplace, people would say, you have so much to share. You have so many stories. I love what your, your message is. You should write a book. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh, oh, maybe someday I'll do that. It was sort of a wish and not really a dream, which I talk about in my book, actually, yeah. Yeah. and how you make the, the shift from just being a wish to a dream and making it reality. Yeah. And so I thought, okay. And, and I started reading, you know, how to write a book books. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I don't know about that. I yeah. don't know about that, you know, yeah. whatever. And I just finally then eventually went on my own with it. But it was really other people saying to me, you should write a book. And I mm. was like, maybe someday, maybe, maybe. I maybe. think that that is what's helpful. It, for me, it was somebody not asking me to write a book, but asking me to help them understand yes. how I got to where I am what I went through in my journey. And that prompted me to start writing it down. But I was helping someone along the way. And I think that that ultimately is where a lot of good mm -hmm. books come from, right? Is your desire to help people through your own stories. And um, so it sounds like even talking to your coach, that might have inspired you as well, because she wanted to, I assume it was a she. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So she wanted to, uh, you know, learn more about certain stories and that, and that helps, right? When you're writing for somebody. It does. And yeah. I think with my coach, even prior to all this book content that I was working on, I, she really helped me refine and define what is my vision for my life? Right. And my vision for my life is to teach, to motivate and inspire people to live their best life, whatever right. that means for them. And that is a different definition for every single one of us. And that's okay. Yeah. But that was the premise from which I came to writing all of this and how I, I try to live my life personally and how, what I, the work I try to do professionally. It always comes down to how can I be of service and how can I help people? How can I share what information I have? How can I share the expertise and skills that I have that I feel, number one, I've been blessed with, but number two, all of them that I've honed over my entire career? And career chapters, I should say, because yeah. I've had a few. <laughs> yes, you definitely have. And I love how you share that in the book. So dare to own you. What? Tell us a little bit about 
why that title, Dare to Own You? What does that mean to you? Well, it really evolved as I was writing the book. The original title of the book was No Knowledge is Ever Wasted, I which can't... is the, actually the impetus for the book. It's yeah. a quote from my grandmother, Chaco, who I must have heard you know, from my mother, from my grandmother, no knowledge is ever wasted in the good Lord's sight is what she would say. And, and really, it truly is. And I talked a lot about that in the book, about how every experience we have had, good and bad, is knowledge. And if we're willing to step back from ourselves and put ourselves in that witness position, if you will, and look at our lives, what are the themes and patterns that we can connect? What are the dots that we can connect from all of these experiences? So as I began to write more and more and more and more last summer in, in 2021, mm -hmm. I discovered that the more I wrote, the more I was owning me because I was so vulnerable, because I was so authentic about my experiences. And by writing them and putting them down on paper, in this case, on my computer <laughs> initially, it really helped me see, Liz, own who you are. You're always telling people to own who they are. Now you need to own who you are. It's tough when you're writing <sighs> down vulnerable stories, right? Oh. You really do have to own it. You do have to own it. And, yeah. and I think that was one of the scariest pieces was, and I'm sure you can relate to this too, Jenna, when you allow that vulnerability, when you share those authentic stories, it is scary. It's really scary. It's yeah. really scary. But you know what? It gives you strength at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it helped me say, you know what, Liz? Own you. Mm. Own you. And I dare everybody to own who they are. Mm, that's so good. So... I hear this a lot through through coaches and other trainers. Uh, I was just in a speaker training program, and they teach you that um, in order to be a great speaker, you know, you're teaching yourself along the way, mm. basically. Yes. yes. And so we're helping ourselves as well as helping <laughs> others as we go through this process of creating a good speech or writing a book, and um, we're all learning kind of at the same time. So mm -hmm. I love that. Dare to own you. I, I do have a chapter in my book called Own Your Story because mm -hmm. that was something really profound. You know, it stood out to me, this whole owning your story thing. Um, when I, it, it's funny, I know there's this old saying, I forget what it is, but it's something like you can't see something in someone else unless it's something that resides in you. And I don't remember what the saying is. I'm really bad with that. I should mm -hmm. never go on Jeopardy because I would <laughs> fail miserably. <laughs> but, um, um, but you know what I'm saying, right? Like it, yes. it's, and, and it became so clear to me. It was, it was standing out to me a lot, this own your story thing because of other people, especially one particular person in my life. I was like, if you would only own this story, you know, you'd be freed from the power that it has over you. Exactly. And I saw it so clearly. I saw it so clearly. And I wanted to help this person come to find out that it was also something I needed to learn is to own my story. And that's something that I really needed to do my whole story, you know, and all of it. And that's what I needed to do to write the book. And that's what it sounds like you needed to do to write yours as well. Indeed. And I think what you were just talking about, about being able to recognize something within ourselves, I think that helps us grow. And I, I'm a firm believer that people come into our lives, whether they're just friends, whether they're partners, whether they're clients, whether you know you meet them just in passing, there's often something we can learn from these individuals, even if it's just for a moment. Yeah. And when, when we're, because it's something that we, we recognize within ourselves, yeah. if we're willing to look, if we're willing to listen to ourselves, yeah. if we're willing to introduce ourselves to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think about this a lot lately, just relationships, even romantic relationships. Now that I'm a little older, getting a lot <laughs> older, <laughs> I see relationships a little bit differently, all sorts of relationships. And um, yeah, so it's true. We need to learn the lessons, just stay open to what we can learn about ourselves because there's another saying that I've come to appreciate about all relationships being a reflection of your relationship with yourself. Yes. And I find that to be more and more true as I, I go agree. on in life. Well, and you know, and it comes back to something that I think I talk about in the book too, which is the most important story we tell ourselves is, is it's actually, that's the most important story. It's the one we tell ourselves. Yeah. That's the most important story. 
Yeah. And are we willing to really take down that veil mm. and look at ourselves honestly? And that's mm. hard to do sometimes. Yeah. It's really hard to do sometimes for yeah. all of us. It really is. It really is. You talk about your work in the news and, um, and how you broke into that. Yeah. I really love how you talk about just not letting fear get to you and, and, and how you overcame that fear. I'd love to have you tell us a little bit about that journey and what you wrote about or what you shared in your book about just that overcoming the fear, not doubting yourself, how you were tested along the way and how you pushed yourself, you know, through these obstacles um, like how did you first get started basically? Like when, cause you had, you're not, you don't, you're not trained as a journalist, right? No, That's not I your background. Not. I am you didn't a go classically to trained singer. I have a, a music degree and I taught high school choral music for a couple years. I sang semi-professionally in Austria, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, and Greece with a concert choir that went and traveled abroad. And we did some tours overseas, which was just amazing. But after a couple of years of teaching, I just felt like there was something more, Jenna, that I was supposed to do. I had absolutely no clue what it was, hmm. but I just had this internal knowing, organic feeling within my soul, there's something more I'm supposed to do. Hmm. I quit teaching without knowing what I was going to do. I worked in retail for a couple of years. You know, you got to pay the bills somewhere mm -hmm. along the way. But even that experience, remember, no knowledge is ever wasted. You know, that that selling experience came in handy, sure. still comes in handy today. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing a lot of assessment tests. I thought maybe I'd be an architect. Maybe I'd be an interior designer. Maybe I'd be a psychologist. And then I was reading this book called Who's Hiring Who by Richard Lathrop. And he talked about informational interviews. I'd never heard of such a thing. I had not heard of that either. Never okay, heard so of such a what thing. is this? So basically you bravely, you know, reach out to someone who's in an industry that you think you want to get involved with and you find, you learn about it. And I had done one television commercial when I was Miss Illinois 1979 in the Miss America scholarship pageant, which paid for my education. Y'all, seriously. I mean, seriously. listen to this background. <laughs> this is all in the book. It's just, yes, it's all in the book. Got... But I bravely and blindly called up two TV stations in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, which was where I was living at the time. And I, I wanted to know, do I have to go back to school and get another degree? Does what I think I might want to do in TV even exist? I thought maybe public relations. I had no clue. Shorten the story, after about six months of conversation with the CBS affiliate, a position was literally created for me. That's amazing. And I learned everything from the ground up. It was like my own graduate school. No, and let's they, back up for a second before yes. we get too deep into this, because I'd yes. love to know, like, why did why do you think they created this position for you? What was it about you or the dialogue or the interview process that you think... <laughs> made them think, how can I have Liz on our team? Like, what was it? It's funny you should ask that question because I had made the appointment with a woman by the name of Mary Sue. And it was for, I don't know, a few days later. And at that time I was working in retail. I was working at Karen Charles. It was a, a clothing store. I don't think it exists anymore. And this woman comes in. I didn't know her. But as I always did with all of the customers that came in, I was friendly. How could I help? Blah, 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 blah. Well, guess who that client and customer was? Mm, Mary okay. Sue. Okay. So she must have seen, she was in, she was doing a little recon. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> she must have just seen something in me in that, just those few moments in the store. Yeah. And then perhaps saw more when I interviewed with her. And they also kind of had a need for some things to be done at the station. And I guess they just thought, well, let's just give her all of this mm. and mm. figure it out. And I learned, I mean, I'm serious. I learned everything on the job. Wow. And everything they said, everything they asked me to do, including the weather. Yeah. yeah. I said, sure, I'll do it. And I'd go home and go, what the heck did I just say yes to? You're, they don't teach this to no. you in college, guys. Like, you don't, this is. This is just, you know, pure grit, just believing in yourself and going for it and believing in yourself and having a vision, knowing what you want. Well, I don't know if I knew exactly what I wanted. Was I scared? A hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. But I would fake it till I make it. I acted like I knew what I was doing. I would, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to figure this out. I'm yeah. going to figure this out. That's what you got to do. Yeah. Of course it's what you And if you believe do. in yourself, they'll believe in you too. 
And so you got the job. Yes. And it turned into much more than that. Exactly. I was there for three years and then got a call from the CBS station in Tampa, Florida, and they were looking for a director of community relations again. And now this was a position, Jenna, where I would be the only female in upper management. Mm. So mm. I took the job. Within a year of being there, they tapped me to also be the morning news anchor and keep my management job. I was working 80 hours a week. I was getting up at two or three in the morning. I was at work at four on the air at, I think, 5.30 or 6, in the newsroom till about 9 or 9.30. Then I'd go upstairs, put my manager's hat on. And it really was hard because, because of my management position, I was privy to a lot of things that were going on in the station with my colleagues in the news department, the direction we were going, the research that was being shared about this anchor or that anchor. Oh. And there I'm sitting next to them. Mm, I mean, mm, you can tough. only imagine how ostracized I felt because they knew that I knew stuff. And you were the only woman at your level. Only woman at that level. Yikes. Yeah, it's it a lot. Scary. 80 hour weeks. Very scary. Oh my yeah. God. It was insane. It was insane. Wow. So I was there for five years and then I got the call to uh, the station that I had 20 years at, which is WCBB Channel 5, the ABC affiliate in Boston. And I came for the news magazine show Chronicle. Oh, I loved it. It was a great way to, to meet everybody in New England. And again, within a year, I was tapped to do two roles. Oh, gosh. Keep Chronicle and do the morning eye opener newscast. And I thought, I can do this. I've done sure. this before. Sure. Why not? Why not? <laughs> do I have a sign on my back that says, please give me two jobs? Exactly. <laughs> and I mean, just one thing led to, the, to another. And ultimately, I had a 28 year career in the television industry. Amazing. So I'm no background, like no training before you got into it. I love it. I love it. Okay. One, one, one TV commercial that I did no. for Pontiac Grand Prix is Miss Illinois. That's no. it. <laughs> that doesn't really count. <laughs> no, but it goes to show you can really do anything you set your mind to. I mean, even exactly. me writing this book and getting into speaking, I didn't come from that. Like, but I set my mind to it and I'm doing it, you know, and here you are, same thing. You've You've been doing keynote speaking. Now you train speakers. Yes, yes. I mean, I'll you know, one of my favorite quotes, and I talk about this in the book because it really helped me when I left my television career to launch my company, but it is, what would you attempt to do if you knew you would not fail? That's by Reverend Robert Schuler. Mm. What would any of us do, Jenna, if we just said, you know what? I'm not going to let fear stop me. Mm -hmm. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to go for it. Will I fail? Perhaps yes. Yeah. Perhaps yes. And that's okay. Yeah. It that's is okay. okay. I don't even see failure as there's no such thing as failure. It's, it's just a that's lesson. It. It's just it's another a, lesson. <laughs> and a, um, a way to pivot. You know, usually, yes. and like, you, what, what's your quote again? The no knowledge is ever wasted. No knowledge is ever wasted. That's yeah. my grandmother, Taco. No knowledge is ever wasted. And it's so true, Jenna. Yeah. Yeah. You learn from that and then you take it into the next thing and it, it evolves. I call it an evolution, not even mm. a failure, but an evolution. This didn't work, but it pivots you to this and it leads you to that. And, you know, it, that's, that's wonderful. I love that. Your, your message is so inspiring. Mm, and, uh, I mean, I have never heard of anyone getting into, you know, a 28 year career <laughs> in journalism who didn't have a background in journalism. I it just wasn't that. easy, girlfriend. It just was not easy. I mean, truly, you know, when I, when I joined the news department, when I was at WCVB, I mean, I didn't have the big J for journalist on my chest and boy, did they let me know about I'm it. Sure, I mean, yeah. I was working with award-winning anchors, award-winning journalists from all over, award-winning editors, videographers. I mean, Boston, WCVB in particular, is nationally known as wow. one of the best TV stations in the country to work in. Mm. Uh, I mean, prolific awards, you know, Edward R. Murrow Awards, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, it was really hard. It was very, very hard. And those were one of some of the obstacles I had to overcome. And then you, you add on top of that, that, you know, again, people wanting to take my, my role, my job, I mean, yeah. looking over your shoulder, you know, who else wants my chair? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. But it sounds very like you were up for the, up for the, the job. You also mentioned, if I read correctly, that you interviewed Oprah. 
Oh, yes. I, I've interviewed her. Uh, well, I interviewed her once. I met her a couple of times. And there's a picture. I was actually, I was looking at the book earlier today. There's a picture of the first time I met her. I have really short hair. And it was probably back, oh my gosh, when she was still in Chicago with her show. This is before yeah. she was even nationally known. And she came because our station was carrying her, her show. And I remember, I have very few regrets, Jenna, but oh. this is this is one the, the way the room was structured, it was like a ballroom at a hotel and people were kind of mingling around. And then she arrived and everybody went and lined up around the edges of the room. Yeah. And nobody welcomed her and greeted her. She just came in and then she started like, like a wedding reception line, the receiving line. She went down and started shaking hands. And I remember in that moment, I'm like, Liz, just go up and welcome her in introduce her, you know, show her around. I'm like, that's not my job. I'm just a little peon. Where's the general manager? He should be doing this. Mm. I wished I had done it now. I wished uh, I had done it. Uh, was she, um, as big then, like, was that at the peak, like a peak she, of her? I mean, she was, she was big, but I mean, obviously she went on to, you know, humongous success. What was and then that? another time I interviewed her, I mean, we just, it, she had done a speech in Boston and I interviewed her after the speech and wow. she's just really cool. I mean, I, oh. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of hers. I know a lot of people don't like her, but what I love about her is her authenticity yeah. and being able to balance her authenticity um, in a world that's kind of crazy. You know, I mean, she just, mm -hmm. I think she does a really good job of that. She's so down to earth and she just yeah. has a beautiful soul and she really wants yes. to help people, but she's also so smart. She built this amazing Ugh. empire. I, I'm in <laughs> awe of this woman. So, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I'm like, you got to interview Oprah Winfrey. What? Yes, That's crazy. I, I interviewed a lot of people and I'm, I'm very fortunate and very blessed. I, I don't take that lightly. I mean, yeah. I, I really had a lot of good fortune in that regard. Well, what, so what is the, um, take us through to the ending of your book, like ultimately like wrap it up for us so that, you know, what, what can readers expect to really take away from your book? Well, the whole title is dare to own you taking your authenticity and dreams into your next chapter. Mm -hmm. And my feeling is if I can do it, if I can go from being a high school music teacher to working in retail, to having a 28 year television career, to being an entrepreneur and now an author, if I can do it, anybody can. You may not do those same path, those same you know jobs that I've had, but if I can recreate myself, and that's what I call it, recreation as opposed to reinvention, because to me, reinvention is you're doing something completely different. Recreation is that no knowledge is ever wasted. You take all of these experiences, all of the knowledge that you have, and you connect the dots and say, oh, I can, I can go here with this. And people often say to me, how did you go from being a music teacher to being on TV? I said, it's storytelling. It made perfect sense. Okay, <laughs> yeah, of it course. Means, <laughs> I mean, now it makes perfect sense. At the time, <laughs> I was like, okay, sure, why not? I'm just going to yeah. go do this. Yeah. But it does make sense. And so I really hope what people take away is if I can do it, if I can recreate my life, so can you. It's beautiful. And as I said earlier, there's that chapter of, is it a wish or is it a dream? And a wish is, well, you know, maybe someday I'll do this or I'd like to do that, but there's no commitment behind it. Mm. There's no action behind it. Now I'm not saying you drop everything in your life to right. go chase after this dream and make it a reality, but you make the commitment to step by step by step because success is not an accident. Number one, hmm. number two, you have to give yourself permission to dare to own you and right. to take that authenticity that you've discovered because you own yourself and take that dream and turn it into your next chapter. We're all living a lot longer. Thank you. Let's hope that continues. We're healthier for the most part, <laughs> despite yeah. COVID, but you know, we are the writers, producers, and directors of our own lives. Amen. Yes. So what are we going to do with that? How are we going to live our best life? Mm. And that's what I hope people take away from this. And they really take away that, again, no knowledge is ever wasted. And at the end of each chapter, as you know, Jenna, there are reflection exercises and some really poignant questions that if you are willing to 
ask yourself those questions and be honest about those answers, I think that you will help un it'll help you uncover and discover more of who you are and more of your authenticity. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I love the recreation. I'd never heard that before, but it makes so much sense. You're not reinventing. Uh-uh. You're reinventing. No, you're not. I mean, Maybe. a lot of people like to use that word and it's not a wrong word. It's not wrong. I just happen to like in recreation a lot yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Oh, so good. I'd love to learn a little bit more about your podcast. Now I got to be a guest on your yes, podcast. Yes, you did. Please, so please fun. listen to her show. Our show together was so much fun. <laughs> it was so much fun. So what, what prompted you to put the podcast together and what is your focus on the show? Well, what prompted me to put it together was really my digital recording producer saying, Liz, you need to do a podcast. You need to do a podcast. I'm like, I don't have time. <laughs> but part of that was also for me, I'm known for doing my homework when I you know, was on television doing my interviews. I would try to learn as much as I could. And I know for myself, what I was worried about was, do, can I make the commitment to my own expectation of myself? Mm. I knew I would love it because I loved interviewing people. I loved the storytelling. Once I made the commitment, it was like, okay, here we go. And the premise of Live Your Best Life with Liz Bruner is really about people who've made transformations in their lives, mm -hmm. people who have recreated their lives, people who have taken that knowledge and transformed in some way. They've risen above challenges, uh, all kinds of things. And, and now they are sharing their stories. And again, it comes back to my vision of teaching, motivating, inspire people to live their best life. If somebody can hear your story, Jenna, or hear my story or any of my guests' stories, about how they have maneuvered through life, how they've overcome obstacles, how they are learning to own who they are and creating their best life. If they hear those stories and they say, you know what, if that person did it, I'm going to try to do it too. Yeah. And that's, that's my, that's my hope and prayer always with every episode. I love it. And you've had some amazing guests on your show. <laughs> yeah. Can you give us a few highlights of some oh of your guests? Oh my gosh. Uh, Jack Canfield for one of Chicken Soup for the Soul Chicken series. Soup. I've had Robin Roberts from Good Morning America. Wow. Uh, Mark Devine, who was a former Navy SEAL. What an impressive story. This is a man who has huge success. He's a Navy SEAL and he admits to having imposter syndrome. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow is right. Uh, former Sergeant uh, Cedric King, who is a double amputee from F. Afghanistan, Marcy Shimoff, uh, happy for no reason. Brian Tracy, uh, I mean, I could go Sherry on. Sherry Deutschman, uh, Jenna Banks, uh, you Sherry know, Deutschman, I mean. Jenna Banks. Yes, yes. Oh my God, Sherry's story is amazing. Everyone's story is amazing. So definitely listen to Liz's podcast. Put it on your download. You absolutely won't regret it. Mm -hmm. And then on top of everything else. You are also, you also have this academy, right? Yes, yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Bruneracademy.com is my online learning platform. And I started it in 2020, in part, as you heard earlier, because that was sort of the off course. I thought, I yeah. just need to do this. But also, when we pivoted, everything that I was doing with my clients, crisscrossing the country pre-pandemic, I was in person with everyone, one-on-one nice. -on -one or doing workshops. And so when the pandemic hit and people went to virtual, it's like, how can I help people? How can I help them know how to do this well? Because a lot of people don't know how to do it very well. And they still don't know how to do it two years later. Mm. So I started offering just some free courses and then I expanded it a little bit more. And then my rock star course, how to be a rock star public speaker. And that's for anyone. It's not just for someone professionally. You have a wedding toast you have to give, for example, oh, or cool. you're accepting an award. And it's a course that it's self-paced. So all of those courses are, are on BrunerAcademy.com. And then in addition to that, just when I launched the book, we added four new courses, which we call the D.A.R.E. Collection. Okay. And they're not based on the book, but they align with the book. Okay. So for example, one course is called D.A.R.E. to Go for Your Goals. Hmm. Another course is D.A.R.E. to Rise Above Tough Times. It's really about resilience. Hmm. Another is called D.A.R.E. to Shift from procrastination to motivation. Mm. 
<laughs> and another one is called Dare to Find Peace of Mind. And it's really a very basic mindfulness meditation course. I mean, you can you can be mindful chopping vegetables, Jenna. Oh, I was working on mindfulness today, actually. It's yes. just really focusing in and breathing. And so those are, are very inexpensive courses, very easy to take. But I wanted to find a way to offer courses and programs for people that speak to my vision and the work that I'm doing, but also not everybody can afford to pay for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. Right, right. So this gives them that opportunity. I love it. I love it. And give us that website address again. Oh, BrunnerAcademy.com. Okay. B-R-U-N-N-E-R -E Academy, A-C-A-D-E-M-Y.com. Awesome. That sounds great. Now, if someone wants to hire you one-on-one, -on -one, you're doing, you're working with a speaker coaching? Is that your main? Oh, I, I do everything. I work okay. with people on presence, executive presence. I work okay. with people on public speaking, presentation skills, storytelling, leadership. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, media training, networking, all of it. So you can just go to lizbruner.com and you'll learn more there. That's yeah, media website. training is actually really helpful. I got a little bit of that yes. myself when the yes. book came out. I was like, oh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. You know, it's, it's funny because... When the pandemic hit, and I mean, I had clients lined up for months, and then everything went by the wayside, oh. and it just fell off my calendar. And I had to pivot like a lot of people did. Yeah. And I know that a lot of my clients are like, you know, we can't do any coaching with anybody right now. We're just trying to save our employees. And I'm like, I get it. I mean, if it's yeah. save an employee or get rid of the coach, well, guess what they're going to do. Yeah. But now what's interesting is since the end of 2021, I mean, my booze, I'm so busy now, which is great. I love That's it. Fabulous. I mean, and, and it's amazing because people are like, wait, we really know, we don't know how to do this very well. And whether it's virtual or the fact that our skills are rusty from working in person with people, mm -hmm. it's been, it's been great. And I'm very fortunate. Fortunate, you know, I just be careful what you wish for sometimes. Right. <laughs> it's right. all it's all good. And then of course now we have the book tour, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, the business of the book, Jenna. I'm so glad you brought this back around your uh, to your book because I want to let everyone know how to get a copy. Oh, is it yes. in is it online? Is it on your website? On Amazon? I assume it's on Amazon and everywhere online. And there, there are many places you can get it. But if you want to, just go to lizbruner.com. It's right there on my homepage. And you can click off and you can get it from Barnes & Noble or Amazon or Indie something or other. I mean, it's all there. You can pick and choose. Or you can literally walk into the Barnes & Noble store and buy ah, it. That's I remember, I mean, yours awesome. is in the airport. I remember when I first walked into the Barnes & Noble, one of them here in Boston. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's my book on the store shelf. It was pretty exciting, isn't it? So cool. It is. <laughs> It's surreal, right? You like it's so surreal. I mean, it's just kind of like that's my book. I'm like, really? It's on I'm the score show. Literally shelf. yesterday at the Miami airport, and I just peeked at the store. I literally just turned my eye, and there it was, like right in the front. I was like, Good for you. oh my gosh! Good for I was you. like rushing to get to. Uh, to my gate. I was worried I was going to be late, but I was like, no, I'm going to stop in there. I signed all the copies and stuck a little bookmark in there, but it was so cool. It's like, ah, you just got to just appreciate those moments. Right? You do. And when I had my book launch party uh, back in December, and that was really for mostly close family and friends, you know, mm -hmm. and, and just just being able to do that was kind of like, oh, my gosh, this is real. And, and there's another event coming up next week. And I'm excited about that. I'm going to be traveling also to California in June for some cool. some book signings and things like that. Oh, so cool. It's just like, OK, here we go. It's happening. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. Well, everybody, I would love to encourage you to pick up a copy of Liz's book. Mm -hmm. I've been reading it and it is absolutely. <laughs> fabulous dare to own you so insightful and thank you for being so vulnerable at mm. win the book and sharing your stories because like we talked about earlier just owning that it we do that so that others can learn through our stories and yes while it's hard to get through all of that um it's so worth it on the other side because not only does it benefit us to own our stories but others get to learn from the hardships that we had to overcome and the fears that we faced and all the painful stories uh, to get to where we are today. And um, I really appreciate you sharing that. And I know so many countless others will appreciate that as well. So oh, thank you, Jenna. But you know, the thing is, none of us is immune to challenge. Yeah, none of us is immune. It's going to affect all of us one way or another at some point in time in our life, if not many times in our lives. But you know what, we can rise above, we can yeah. rise above. 
Yes. Oh, lovely. Liz, thank you so much for coming on today mm -hmm. and sharing your amazing story with us. Really nice I, to have you here today. I so appreciate you having me on, Jenna. Thank you very much and be well. Thank you. You too. I hope you got some wonderful inspiration today on the show. If you haven't subscribed to the show yet, please go ahead and click that subscribe button now because I have so much more to share with you in the future about how we can live life to our fullest potential. If we haven't already connected on social media yet, you can find links to not only my social media handles and website, but Liz's as well. So just look in the show notes for that. But you can connect with me on my social media handle, which is at JennaBanks.0. You'll find me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, just type in my name, Jenna Banks. Also, though, I would love to encourage you to stop by my website, which is jenna-banks.com. I do share a lot of great information on there, including links to my book, which is called I Love Me More, How to Find Happiness and Success Through Self-Love, which I'd love for you to check out. But also I have um, a, a, an area I call my journal. And I kind of get really deep into some personal insights that I like to share there in kind of a journal style blog, if you will. So definitely check that out. Thank you so much for tuning into the show today. I hope to see you again next time. And remember, your love is your power. Until next time.